Okay, guys. So today the workshop's about obsessive over great service. It's the first workshop of our core values that we're going to be doing over the year. For some of the guys that I don't know, my name's Gurpreeth, and for the cameras. Um, so yeah, today's just going to be a bit of a discussion about obsession of great service. There's going to be a bit of a um, group component to it. So the guys that you're sitting closest to, groups of four, and I think there's going to be one five. Someone should have a post-it notes, and I think most of you have got pens now. That's going to be part of the, the mini group discussion. So, I know you guys know the core value off by heart, but obsessed over great service, what does the core value from Creative Roots actually say? It's deliver incom incompatible experiences. We understand that our bottom line is derived by satisfied customers. Uh, we aim to deliver um, great service and products every time. This means that we go the extra mile for our clients. We always do what we say we're going to do and we never sweep shit under the carpet, and we always leave everything better than we found it. So the goals of today's workshop is, firstly, to understand what great service means to us personally, and as part of our sort of team and your colleagues and your friends and family. Uh, and then the second part is understanding why obsessing over great service is so important to our business. So, just as a starter, just from you guys, what words come to mind when you think about obsessing over great service? So just, just shout out anything that you think that's important. Excellence. Excellence. Happy clients. Happy clients. These guys are giving me big words to write. <laughs> professionalism. <laughs> That's a really good one. Is there any particular reason why professionalism? I think if you're obsessing over providing great service, you're going to make sure your work, your work is not only representing you, you want to make sure you're putting out a good image. Yeah. Communication. Communication. Any particular reason why communication? Clients in the dark, the more they know about the project and how it's progressing, you know, the more confident they are in their abilities. You're keeping them informed pretty much all the time. Consistent grades. <laughs> nice one. What do you mean by that, Jackman? Well, when you got like a 2% slope going over there and then you got like 5% <clears throat> down like the next section, yeah. like that's not too nice. You want the entire yard to be, you know, nice and flat and just one, one sort of line. Yeah, fair enough. That's Beautiful. A, that's a great metaphor for just general <laughs> service. Nice yeah. and even. No surprises, keeping everything. Maybe yeah. like a consistent an eye for detail. Maybe trying to throw that into there. Yeah, detail. So that's really good for that's really good for when we go the extra mile for clients. You're building a rapport with them. You're looking out for something that's going to make them feel better. Uh, so yeah, detail is really good. Insight. Insight. Yeah. All our clients don't know what they want, and yeah. we can provide that for them because we have the experience and the knowledge. And listening too. Listening. Yeah, some definitely key words there, which I think are probably going to come up during the workshop. So, you know, sort of have a look at those, read through them, what do they, what do they mean to you? Um, yeah, I think those are really great words, and I think they'll come up during the workshop. Okay, so what is great service? Um, I think great service is can be perceived as a sort of personal thing as well. 
I think through developing this um, workshop, I sort of realised that it's not a complex thing to do at all. It's actually really easy to give great service and be considerate to people. So I think great service can be defined by making family, friends and colleagues, clients and our community feel valued. Um, I think the practice of giving great service is intertwined in everything that we do, even if we don't realise it. Giving great service, you do it on, on a daily basis. If you're making dinner for your partner, you're making them feel val valued and cared for. And I think fundamentally, great service is underpinned by letting other, knows, let, uh, letting other people know that we care for their well-being and we take pride in what we do. So I think it's the little things, you know, like at the end of the day, sweeping off the road if there's a couple piles of, of dirt or whatever, the yeah. little things add up to create that great yeah. kind of service. Right? Blowing, blowing off the, the neighbors or the client's car before yeah. you go just to make sure they're not dusty. Mm -hmm. So what's that going, like going an extra mile, or looking at details? Okay, so what, what does it fundamentally take for us to gr give great service? Like what qualities do we sort of look for? Um, you know, we said it before, communicate, very important. We want everyone to know, you know, what's going on, keeping them informed, making them feel important. And that, I'm not just talking directly about a client relationship, I'm talking about your individually as a team, um, even to yourself, you know, touch it with yourself, uh, just, you know, keep yourself sort of going. Listening, I think Matt said that earlier. Uh, listening to your clients and your colleagues and what they're sort of saying to you through conversations on a daily basis. If, you know, if someone's having a bad time and you can sort of hear that's happening, you want to support that person in some sort of way. And that sort of reinforces the element of giving great service. I think mean, like listening to your clients too, your brief, like, yeah. you know, Matt has to listen. I mean, we all have to, but especially like, and, and your self designers, listen to what the clients want, make it swell, and, and then delivering that, and, yeah. and listening to what they, what they want in their yard. Yeah, like, like building, that, building that rapport with your, your, the people around you, I think it's very important to be personable, be easy to communicate with. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, respect, you know, you're respecting people's time. Um, care, we, we spoke about that before. Um, giving great service is just showing people that you care for what, how they feel and for what you're doing as well. Building trust. Uh, building trust, I think, is pretty key. You know, everything that we've sort of spoke about before, uh, I think it, underpins that element of building trust. If you don't trust your team member or anyone, your client, your, your client doesn't trust you, it portrays a sort of bad image of the, uh, of the company and probably of yourself. And showing integrity. Uh, I think that goes back to never sweeping shit under the carpet with the core value. Um, you want to leave everything better than what you found it. And by showing integrity, that just sort of reinforces that, that element. So, the first mini group discussion. So you should be in like roughly groups of four. So I just want you guys to take five minutes or so. Just talk about a time when you went the extra mile for your client, your friend, a family member. Right guys, everyone back in the room. So yeah, how was that? How did that go? Yeah, okay, so yeah, I think that the exercise was to sort of discuss about how it made you feel, why you done it, um, and what were the results. So I'm just gonna choose one from the board, uh, and then whoever was talking about it, I hope we can, we can engage with them a little bit more. So, okay, 
So brought a coffee for Newfeld when I saw he forgot his mug. Who was that? Mommy. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, we had a full mug on the uh, counter. Um, we went for uh, work yesterday. Yeah. So I grabbed it and brought it to work. Nice. So, he had his coffee. so, how did it make you feel by doing that? Felt good because I knew you'd do it the same thing for him. Yeah. yeah. Newfield, how did that make you feel? Oh, I needed it. Yeah. I was, I was like, I went to the gym in the morning and then I, we had a meeting here and met on site, so I didn't have any coffee. Yeah. And I was really tired and saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you, you done it because you knew you never had his coffee, made you feel good. And I'm sure the results are you've created a better relationship with each other. Caffeinated. Yeah, ready, <laughs> re ready to go for the day. Um, okay, keeping site clean, forming relationships with clients. Who's who was that? No, that was ours. That was your one. So. Just talk a little bit more about that. Um, we had a couple of different examples. Uh, just taking to what Matt just said was that, okay, cots across the street, the neighbors had a bunch of leaves there. You know, they've been putting up with us for months, so just breaking those leaves, taking them away for that neighbor. Yeah. Or if we're getting leaves on our neighbors from our blowing or whatever, or even if there's just an extra that are definitely from our tree, you know, that are just going into their yard, cleaning that up just so they don't have to worry about it, or grabbing extra, just extra little bits, keeping the front of the roads clean in front of the houses so that, yeah. you know, the cars go by and doesn't make anything dusty or whatever. So that's something that you didn't necessarily have to do, but you recognise the importance of it, and essentially go an extra mile for, not even your client, for, for the neighbour essentially. Yeah. So, how did you think that made other people feel? Did, wow. did anyone else even see it, or was it just... I mean, sometimes they don't, right? But honestly, it's almost inadvertently helps you out too, right? You get that little hit of dopamine that you help that person out, whether they notice it or not. Yeah. But even if when they do notice it, you know, it's just that, that extra little bit there, you know, or they just say thank you, and that just is enough. Yeah. For you to just go, yeah, that was worth it. Yeah, well, and then we're just, you know, if you're constantly just making sure you got a clean site, you're not hindering the, the road at all, the neighbors. That's even leaving it better how you found it, right? You want to, yeah. You want you want to make it, it look like you were never there. It's, yeah. like a, it's a low impact kind of. Yeah. Way of it. Just for so, someone did notice, uh, we're at Cats, we've been keeping it pretty uh, pretty clean on the road there. And actually, the neighbor called the owner and said that we were very respectful, we're making sure everything's clean. That's so it's definitely being noticed when we're doing those things. Um, yeah. It's being passed yeah, over. Like, even if they're not in a end up being our clients or something, like that's not always the important thing. It's like you don't want them to hate when we're there. Yeah. Yeah, you want everyone to be happy that we're there. It's a better definition. Make friends. Well, you don't do it, that's what we know. Yeah. So. Two no, 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 no. So yesterday at, on Jackson's site and Jordan Jordan's site, we've been talking to the neighbors and one neighbor came yeah, up with some that. extra turf, so we talked about making sure we order some <laughs> for when we get turf and, and just ha give, it, give it to him, kind of taking that out of off his hands. And then the neighbor, the next house down on the that? Uh, the one right on the corner. Yeah, has, he's been by too looking at the job. He said he's had some health issues with, with cancer and stuff. Oh yeah. And he needs a few Pretty barrels good. of crush, so we both kind of talked about it. He had the idea of just taking it down there and spreading it out for him. And that those little things are kind of, their impacts on him, and they'll be, he'll probably mention it to somebody in the neighborhood. It's just, it's going to leave a good taste in everyone's yeah. mouth as we kind of move out of the project, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, another one, last one here. Buddy had an accident while staying with me, and I offered up my bed to make him for, to feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, I had a buddy staying with me for the winter uh, so we can go and kind of ski bum around for the winter. And you know, two weeks ago, he had a pretty bad accident where he's had a third degree separation of his shoulder, cracked three ribs and had a puncture in his lung. Um, he was supposed to fly out on the Sunday, so he still had like four or five days and instead of making him sleep on the mattress that he had on the ground, he was yeah. offered up my bed to make sure that he was more comfortable. That's awesome. Um, and how did it make you feel, first of all? 
I mean, I, yeah, I didn't mind sleeping on the ground. I was yeah. good and ready to go. Felt yeah. my back a bit, to be honest. So, yeah. and it was, it was good to know that he was more comfortable. Nice. Yeah, so I think it, I think it all, it's, this is going to sound really cheesy, but I think ultimately by doing all these little acts of kindness and being considerate to other people and just making people feel valued, it, it, it really does feel good. I know, that, I know that's really cheesy, but that's what I sort of kept on coming around to. It's like it makes you feel good that you've done something nice for someone else and you're you're making that person feel valued and making their day better. Your colleague, your clients, your family, whatever. And I think that's fundamentally what great service means to us on a personal level. As cheesy as that is, but you know, that's, I think that's where we're at with that. So we've got a story, a great service story from someone in Creative Roots. So give me a second, I'm gonna get this set up. So Ryan, we're just at the point where we chatted about, about just telling us a story about great service, about creative roots, or you know, giving yeah. us your... I had so much to say while you guys were doing all your exercises, so I'll, I'll uh, I made some notes and I'll just, I'll, I'll talk about it because I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I see a lot of good examples of good and bad customer service and just service to others uh, everywhere I go. A, a good example is uh, a 12 year old uh, like a waiter at, at a restaurant that I've been frequenting on the beach here and the amazing insight this kid had on on servicing customers um, at one he was giving us such good customer service I started asking him questions uh, as I was leaving and I had taken him away from his his tables for just a short period of time and and he was he was answering my questions and so yeah i just have to make money you know i'm helping my family stuff like that 12 years old carrying a had a little apron on and, and a uh and carrying a menu and and at one point he says hold on a second i gotta run he said i have to get back to my customer over there because the customers get anxious when they can't ask me something and he sprinted from one end to the other uh, through the sand because this is an outdoor place and I thought to myself absolutely amazing the the level of natural customer service that people have when when they are when they're forced to to be to have to have that that level just in order to survive and I think you know that that makes me think more of how important it is to some than it is the other. Um, another another thing there was he had left and I saw a car pulling into the parking lot and in this place there's like 15 beachfront restaurants and when you come in you see that the owners or someone's out there with the menu trying to wave the car in to get him to come to their place and this kid was about oh he was about 40 or 50 feet from me and so I, I called his name and I, 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 I motioned for him to come and I said, hey, there's a, there's, a, there's a potential customer here. The kid sprinted out there his bare feet with the menu. And he was right past the elderly people that were waving them in. And he talked to them for a couple minutes. And sure enough, the whole family came into this restaurant. And he had a big smile on his face. So I see it everywhere. You know, you go from that to, you know, the thought that giving customer service or just service in general um, can be something that even you do for a neighbor with helping them or not helping them. Or in this case, the lady who lets her dogs bark 24 hours a day next door. <laughs> I feel she's giving me a really bad service. But, um, no, I, I, you know, the customer service thing, I, I think it's super important, obviously. I see a lot of it and I get reminded a lot of it in our code greens. And that makes me feel good. I think just in general, when you get good customer service or service from your coworkers, or you give service to the community or anything else, it's just it's one of those things that uh, it's inherent in us that when we do it, it makes us feel good. Or when we receive it, it makes us feel good also. 
but when we don't receive it, you, know, you can feel the level of energy just dropping. And, uh, and you ask yourself why, why it isn't happening. So, you know, and, and I hear from this meeting that it's not really difficult for any of any of you guys to come up with ideas on how to do it or understand what the concept is. I think the secret is that, like anything else that we deem as important as a group, like profit or even having these core value workshops and stuff, is to do it intentionally. Um, even if that means we have to put it in the calendar to remind ourselves to give customer service. So, and especially until it becomes part of the culture, which I'm, I'm sure is, is a big part of what we already we already have here. So. Yeah. Yeah. Can you guys hear all that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Glad yeah. you muted. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? One one thing, guys. You know, if someone would be kind enough to walk over there and pull the cardboard cutout of Christine Nato out to the forefront. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Someone already did it. Oh, okay, great. Who was it? And so, yeah. Like Michigan honestly, man. that was the whole concept uh, behind. In intentionally making sure that our customers voices are heard was to have Christine who is arguably as good a client as we have present in the meetings and in the conversations that we have regarding delivering on our promise to make the neighbors jealous and I really think that's that's important for us to remember is that you know, we're here to serve and and if we if we help each other um, remember that that is that's our mission in general as servant leaders as customer service people etc that uh, we can really get that that momentum going and it's uh, it's a super powerful thing and it it creates this I mean when you get an accolade when you're feeling great at things when you when you lift the extra weight at the gym. You do anything positive, you get that shot of dopamine, and I think that's super important to remember that. You know, if we're going to get addicted to anything, let's let's get addicted to giving the best we can to each other and to the people who, in essence, put the food on our tables. I feel like, especially with customer service, like it's it's more important to do that well than a lot of other things too, because it's so hard to come by. Like I know personally, I've wanted to work in customer service for a lot of my life, and I've always been like, I want to try being a waiter, try doing this, and I've never once got a positive response to that. Anytime I tell anyone, they're like, really? Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to work with people? People suck. Why would you want to do this? Like, dealing with people is the worst. I'm like, well, maybe just change your mindset, and you might have a better time with it. Like, it's, it's hard to come by people that actually want to do that and want to give good customer service. Yeah, yeah you know, I remember, you know, in, in Ari's book, you know, and, and one of the things that he, they use as a philosophy is that, you know, giving service to others, or customer service, is still an honorable thing to do in today's world. And, you know, if you don't have the perspective of, you know, living in a place like I do, you know, a couple, two, three months a year, where if you don't give that service, you literally don't eat. And you don't keep your job because there are, you know, there's a hundred guys that will take your job tomorrow and do it as good as you do. Um, it really becomes more than just something that, oh, I guess I have to do that. It's, um, you know, none of us have perfect days. There's days where you know, the customer's being an asshole, and <laughs> you, what you really want to do is tell them that. Um, but those are the days where. You can decide, you know, to some degree, you know, be an actor. Um, Tyson, like you said, you, you wanted to be a customer service. And when you think about all those waitresses and waiters who, you know, who are having hard times right now and stuff like that, but still go out there and do their best to make it a positive experience. Those are the ones who want to tip more. Those are the ones who are most likely to you know, start a conversation with. And the whole thing comes full circle. Yeah, that's that's awesome, Ryan. Thanks for that. I think some of the just touching on what Ryan said there about not giving great service and you know what that means and the results of that um, is what we will sort of touch on in the next part of the 
the workshop, which is, you know, why is obsession over great service so important to our business? And we'll touch on some of the things that Ryan spoke about, about not giving it how it affects your bottom line. You know, it all has a tangible effect on, you know, the, sus the sustainability of our business, essentially. So Ryan, thanks for that. Ryan definitely touched on a lot of great things there regarding what great service means to a company, which we'll sort of talk about a little bit more. Um, so yeah, the, the next part of this is why it's so important to obsess over great service and what it means to sustaining a good business. So why give great service? This is from The Guide to Great Service by uh, Ari Weinzweig. Great read, really easy to listen to on, on Audible. It took less than two hours, but you know, for any of you enthusiasts who want to sort of reinforce what giving great service is all about, this is definitely a good book to do it. So, uh, why give great service? Great service makes us something special. We're standing out from the crowd. We operate in a space where, like Ryan says, there's five or six other companies that do what we do. But what makes us, what makes us stand out is being enthusiastic, being impersonable, showing people that you sort of genuinely care for what, for what you're doing. Um, great services, sound marketing. I think that's basically describing, we talk about great things that happen to your friends and family. Um, and when you're sitting talking about good experiences, that's what sound marketing is all about. When someone talks about a landscape company, we want them to talk about creative roots and by emphasizing great service, uh, it leads to sound marketing. Uh, good service keeps customers coming back. That's an easy one. You receive bad service from anywhere, you're not gonna go back to that place. And it yields bottom line, uh, better bottom line results. So again, just what Ryan was touching on that, investing in great customer service you get a return on that investment. People value what you're doing more. And there's tons of stats out there that say people value customer experience. Even if the product is not fantastic or the best thing out there, how you make people feel is what they'll remember. They won't necessarily remember exactly how much you paid for a pint, but you'll remember that the barmaid who spoke to you nicely, respected you, just showed like a gen genuine interest in you. Um, So yeah, I, I, and I think sort of Ryan touched on the company culture a little bit as well, and how great service promotes a positive uh, company culture. So it makes for a better place for us all to work. And the reason why company culture is really important, it's we're talking about sustainability of your business. You're gonna attract better people, better skilled people. Um, everyone talks positively about uh, you know, places that you've worked before when, you, when, you, when you've had a lot of fun with your, your colleagues and you're looking forward to getting up and seeing each other every day. Like I was saying, it attracts better people to work with. It's, it's easier to do, to give great service than be an ass and not care. And, and that's essentially what the culture's all about. Setting, and we do have a great culture here, which everyone's worked really hard to set. But the hard, uh, even harder thing is maintaining that good company culture, and that's something that you just have to do every single day. And it's the right thing to do. It comes back to the fact that it feels good to do it. You know, you want to go home thinking that you've made someone else's day a little bit better. Um, and you know, clients see it, you know, we, we talk about w work like your clients are always watching. The energy that you guys give out on site or interact with the client or whatever, that portrays a certain image of the company. So if you guys are always smiling, having a great time, people do pick up on that. And I think, you know, we've, we've seen that quite a lot. Um, I've definitely heard it a lot from the construction team and the maintenance team as well. So, Second little mini group discussion. 
Uh, list three companies that you go back to over and over again, and one reason why. So, in your groups that you had before, just a company that you respect, that you really like, that value, values you. And then come and, come and pin it up on the board here. <laughs> right, guys. Everyone back in the room? Okay. So, let's take this one. So, was that Mad Mango? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Marmalade Cafe. Yeah. Car parts, Tyson. So it says you chose these places based on service and not price. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like Marmalade, we were saying Marmalade Cafe, it's a little bit pricier than Tim Hortons or whatever, but you're paying for that. You don't mind paying the extra three dollars for a coffee and, and sandwich if you're getting a great uh, relationship in return, yeah. a great service in return, it's it's worth it. They're yeah. always talking, they're always asking you how you are, they're not just Asking you your order. Yeah, I've noticed that from like Starbucks. Every time you go there, mm -hmm. they'll ask you how you're doing first of all before you, you, they even take your order, which I think is like a good sort of personable uh, thing to do. Uh, what else we got here? Wings. Good wings and great servers every time. Consistency. Yeah, I didn't have three companies, but this one place in Rutgers, I go to. Every time, it's just uh, the wings are just awesome. Beer is always cold, and the servers are cool, chill, and uh, efficient. You know, you don't see them too much, you don't see them too little. You're never wondering where they are. You're, you're always just yeah uh, satisfied. Post yes, house, really good. Hey, post house? No, wings are up. So yeah, consistency was one of the words that we spoke about earlier, and I think that's about you know being comfortable and being familiar with. The, the company that you're going to. And that's sort of part of our job is to make our clients feel comfortable and familiar and informed about what's going on with their service. Uh, what else have we got here? Okay. So this person gave a, a particular location, McDonald's on Lakeshore. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? One uh, older lady, <laughs> one older lady, and she's just very nice. I guess I don't know. That was, that was there. Yeah, he's gone. Right? Yeah, but there's one older lady, very <laughs> influential, makes it a great experience. Yeah, and he's not wrong. The one on Lake Shore is way better. Yeah. <laughs> right? And then right? also on that little sheet of paper right there, uh, Home Hardware, the one in Summerland. Yeah. yeah. I've been in there about five times, uh, kind of twice each weekend. And there's one fellow in there. Every time I'm there looking at something, he'll come out. So like last weekend, we were talking about Dutch hose, and they had two different ones. So like we were going through like the the you know pros and cons to each of them, and he's just been very helpful in every single way. And his thing was a happy customer will come back, and he is correct. I've been back there <laughs> twice. Every day at home or a weekend in Summerland, like this guy is talking to you about Dutch hose for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> You might, you might come back, but you might quit. <laughs> You're gonna go back. Hey, where's this guy? Oh yeah, he quit. This guy kept coming back. He uh, What's this one? Ti roof rescue. Yeah, I got into the roof a couple years ago, and yeah, it's a super stressful time. And I don't know. I had a couple people come and quote it out, and this guy was most adamant about giving me like the best deal possible and there's just a lot of clarity and like openness and I don't know, he just took photos, brought me up there, showed me what he was doing, felt super reassured and like I was saying, telling everybody it was like morning, my anxiety was up here and then by the end of the day, you know, just from the good customer service and that clarity and everything and yeah. Um, yeah you know, was, and you, you, you remember that quite vividly, like how, how, how you made you feel? Yeah, that. after a roof, I'm very adamant about recommending, recommended them to the other clients now. Nice. PI roof that's and I feel like it's even bigger too for like some trades or, or some company, or not companies, uh, but just services that are maybe known for worse customer service. Most like definitely. sometimes you like get kind of scared if you need to, even like landscaping or construction or something like that, and you and like construction workers or whatever have a bad reputation. You come in and you're like, you're not just 
like good because everyone else is bad, like you're just way better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then like you're gonna stand out way more. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the common thread from all these stories is that, you know, we, we remember these places because of the experiences that we've had. You know, we remember good and bad experiences. Um, and obviously bad experiences lead to you not going back to that place or even mentioning it up here. Um, and that's obviously fundamental. And I know, like I said before, it's not a complex thing. It's an easy thing to understand and get a grasp of if you're giving great service. Those people are just going to talk positively, positively about you and, you know, recommend them to your friends, to their friends and, and family. So, yeah, th it's the reason for this little exercise is just to sort of outline why obsession with great service is so important to our business. We operate in a time where more than ever, people talk about a company in a good or a bad way, and we have so much accessibility to that. You know, if you're deciding to go to a new restaurant, what's one of the first things you do is like you go and look at the review and see what other people have said about that. That's just that's just how we how we are now. I'm sure you guys do the same thing. You want you you want to have a sort of impression of that place. Beforehand, it was just word of mouth in our community, but now everyone's got access to what our company is and. Uh, you know, what other people think about what we've done before. Uh, so yeah, that's basically just saying uh, con consumers now have so much buying power. Each and every one of us here have sort of experienced that as well. You want to have all the information to make a good informed decision. And giving great service, what you guys do every day, leads up to that person reading a great review on the website or hearing it from another person and being like, right, creative roots, they promote a positive culture, people say really great things about them, I'm happy to go to the next step with that company and inquire. Uh, yeah, so again, just whether it's a product, holiday destination, we're all influenced by what other people say. Uh, so just a couple of general quotes that I found, and I'll be happy to share this website that I found, which I thought was really informative. It talks about um, how people react to good service and bad service on social media um, and just some sort of tangible effects of, you know, what, you know, the, the, the sort of surveys of how people react to bad service and getting good service as well. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think generally we tell people about bad service more than anything else, you know, and that's sort of reflecting on how pe people are are feeling and how they've been made to feel by a particular company or a person. And again, that's just reinforcing that we all have that responsibility to ensure that the core value of obsession over great service is, is maintained. Uh, yeah, okay. So, so yeah, just to, just to recap, we're sort of coming to the end of the, the workshop. Hopefully today we've had the opportunity to talk about what great service means to us personally and between team members um, and, and, why it's so, and why it's so important to the business. You know, we spoke about how it, how it yields a better bottom line at the end of the day and all the work we do towards that. So that's us done guys, any, any questions? You know, open up to yourselves, anything that you're sort of thinking about that we've not mentioned today or Anything that you want to talk about? Awesome. Oh, no. yeah. 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 Yeah.